Five Nights at Freddy's. That's where I wanna be, Five Nights at I'm gonna give it to you straight. The odds aren't looking good for you. If you are a complete and total noob like me, that means you haven't played the game, have years of lore to catch up on, but don't worry because I'm going to put myself through hell in order to become an expert on Five Nights at Freddy's and then relay to you the juicy deets so that we can go see the movie with dignity. Now, you probably don't need to be an expert on FNAF in order to enjoy the movie, but it'll probably make it more fun. I can't emphasize enough how little I know about the franchise as it currently stands. I know that you play as a security guard and then animatronics try and kill you. Why? I don't know. But because of TikTok, I know that world-renowned YouTuber Markiplier uploads gameplay of FNAF, and it's at this point that I have to unfortunately come clean and tell y'all that I do not currently watch Markiplier, and so I haven't seen any of his vids. I'm so sorry. But that's okay. There's a first time for everything, and luckily I went to Mark's channel and found that he, in fact, has a FNAF playlist, which is currently 125 videos long. Oh, good lord. Oh my god, my brain is so overwhelmed. The story is so fucked up. The, the poor children. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't watch every single video on that playlist. There were like gameplays of fan created games, for example, that I skipped. I watched all of the FNAF 1, 2, 3, and 4 four gameplays, Security Breach, Ruin, and then a little extra. I skipped Help Wanted and Special Delivery because I just wasn't in the mood for VR and I didn't think that they would be like important to the lore or anything. I feel dumb because it is very obvious that there is lore to these games and it's, it's very obvious that I do not know it. I browse through the comments section of every video that I watch and it seems like when Mark speculates about the game, he gets a lot of things right and then he also gets stuff wrong on top of that so I just don't know what to believe at this point. I also saw via the comments that Game Theory aka MatPat, he uploads a lot of lore related content as well. Since he's so heavily involved on the lore scene, I guess that'll be my next stop. And before you say, Amanda, you can't possibly be filming this as it's happening because you're wearing the same shirt all this time, has it ever occurred to you that I haven't and don't plan on taking this shirt off in the near future? But to the shock of everyone in the near vicinity, I happen to smell heavenly, and that is solely thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service with a mission to empower each and every person to express themselves through scent. They've created a great way to discover, purchase, and experience new scents whether you're a newbie or a fragrance aficionado. With Scentbird you choose a new designer fragrance to try each month for just $17. They carry popular brands such as Prada, Gucci, and Versace, as well as many indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. They have perfumes, colognes, and many unisex options as well. With each fragrance, you get a 30-day supply, which allows you to try them out without spending a lot of money on a full-sized bottle, and those can cost over $150, sometimes in the $300 to $500 range. They come in these really cute cases that have a really convenient lock and unlock feature, and you can easily take this case off, and as you can see, there's a generous amount of fragrance inside. This month, I got Sydney Rock Pool by Arquise, Aqua di Parma by Ariancha de Capri, and lastly, Gold by Commodity. I really love gold because of how sweet it smells. And then Aqua di Parma is very fresh smelling. It's very rejuvenating. And then Sydney Rockpool has a really nice like by the water ocean smell. But it's really great because depending on my mood, I can pick and choose which scent I want to wear that day. So if you don't want people catching a whiff of you and mistaking you for Michael Afton, use my code TODDHUNTER for 55% off at Scentbird. That's just a little over $8 for your first month. Available in the USA and Canada. Thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the links below and now let's get back to the video. Okay, so psych, change of plans. I'm gonna play the game, the first one, and I, I kind of know how to beat it. So I am expecting to do really well first time around. I've never played this game before. <sighs> God, I'm probably gonna shit myself. And I even like turned off the lights and everything. Is Bonnie already gone? Oh, already gone. That is lovely. So great. Oh, 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 
So um, they're both out. That's, that's great. They can uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Mm -hmm. My worry is that I'm not going to be quick with it when it comes to the door because I'm not really quick with it in general. I don't think anybody's ever described me as quick in my goddamn life. I'm feeling quite parched. That's the um, update over here. Stomach still cramping. Wouldn't you believe? I hope you enjoyed that because um I didn't so I just watched Game Theory's ultimate timeline of FNAF lore. FNAF is a lot more extensive than I thought. We've got the games, the lore behind it, but then there's also books. And all of these things are created by this guy named Scott. Scott, you're a legend. But there's also a lot of fan created content as well. Games, cosplays, animations, songs. There are these songs by the Living Tombstones, which is probably, I don't wanna like, you know, say anything, but I, they're probably the most well-known songs in the FNAF fandom. I went and listened to all of them and I was surprised that I knew a bunch of them because a lot of them are really popular on TikTok. FNAF songs have a distinct style and so I feel like there are even other songs that are popular on TikTok that are not by this band, but you would probably recognize the FNAF genre if you heard it. I still have a lot of questions, still a little bit confused, but I know so much more about FNAF than I did a few days ago. I'm gonna try my best to teach y'all what I learned, but if you're a FNAF expert and I get something wrong or I miss something really important, feel free to tell me in the comments so that we can all be on the same page. Now, let's do this, bitches. What's tricky about talking about the lore is that I feel that there is a lot of speculation. It's hard for me as a person who's not really in the fandom to distinguish between what is largely accepted to be true and what is actually canon. This whole series is centered around a dude named William Afton and his family. They're supposed to be British, although as the series has gone on, sometimes like they're not British, sometimes they are. In the newest movie, they don't appear to be British, so there's that. William's wife's name is Clara. She hasn't played a crucial role in the series as of right now, but there's speculation that she might be involved in security breach according to game theory. You know, she might play a role in this movie, like we don't really know. William and Clara have some children. The oldest, his name is Michael. Michael has a younger sister named Elizabeth. There is also most likely another younger sibling. I feel like the fandom pretty universally agrees on this 
Christmas and this younger sibling doesn't have a name but they go by the crying child because that's how he's depicted in the games. Some pretty major tragedies befall this family. Elizabeth dies because of this clown looking like robot named Circus Baby, the stomach of which opened up and crushed Elizabeth inside. Ice cream is involved. I don't know if Baby originally lured Elizabeth with ice cream. I don't know if Baby turned Elizabeth into ice cream after the fact. Maybe both. <laughs> then with Crying Child, he is very scared of the Freddy animatronics, of just animatronics in general. And as a result, he is tormented by his brother Michael. And on his birthday, for some reason, they decide to hold his birthday at one of the Freddy restaurant locations with a bunch of animatronics. And so Michael and his friends play a prank on Crying Child where they hold him up to a Freddy Fazbear animatronic and Freddy, his jaw, clamps down on Crying Child's head. This is the Bite of 83 not to be confused with the Bite of 87. So Crying Child is rushed to the hospital but he ends up dying. You may be thinking, wow that's weird, two of William's children tragically died because of animatronics. What's up with this family and animatronics? Well William Afton and this guy named Henry Emily were business partners and they created like the whole Fazbear Corporation. So you may be thinking, wait a second, the Crying Child death, that was an accident, that was his older brother was trying to play a prank it went horribly tragically wrong but then we have baby an animatronic who was deliberately designed to lure and kill children one by one why the hell does such a creation exist why would william make such a thing i don't know so the thing is though this whole series centers on murderous animatronics and the reason for that is because william starts to go on a killing spree and there's only one thing worse than a killing spree a child. It's hard to argue that the death of William's children led him down a really dark, murderous path because it would seem that according to the games, Elizabeth's death happened before Crying Child's death, which would mean that William Afton was making these murderous animatronics before any of his children got killed. It's possible that my boy William has always been weird and was always interested in murdering children. He didn't actually want his own children to be murdered, I'm assuming, so that's rough. William is starting to kill more children. One of the children that he killed was in fact Charlotte, who is Henry's daughter. Daughter. Betrayal, I know. He kills and he kills, and what does he decide to do with the bodies? Stuff them in the animatronics. So the reason that these animatronics seem to come to life and have a mind of their own is probably because something spooky is happening with the souls of the children who were murdered and then stuffed in these suits. Based on this, it would seem that Elizabeth possesses Circus Baby. For whatever reason, Charlotte possesses the marionette slash puppet. Unnamed children possess the others. And then I think eventually the souls that were trapped in these suits start to haunt William, which causes him to go in one of these animatronic suits. Like, it was thought that originally how William would like lure the original children was dressing up in this suit, but he decides to get into a suit that was already occupied by like a spring lock mechanism and it ends up clamping down on his whole body, his body gets all like mangled, but he doesn't die. He becomes something called Springtrap. So I mean that's when you could say things get a little weird. So meanwhile, or maybe before, Michael goes to work at a place where Circus Baby is being held. Baby tricks him into becoming a vessel for an amalgamation of animatronics that have merged together and it's called like Ennard, I think. So just to clarify and to really spell it out for you, Michael's insides, his bodily organs, were scooped out leaving only the shell of a man and his innards were replaced by Ennard. This works for a second until Michael's decaying body uh, eventually becomes uninhabitable for Ennard. And so Ennard leaves, but now Michael is an empty shell of a man, alive through reasons science cannot explain. So then it is speculated that Michael goes on a hunt. He goes to pretty much each and every Freddy Fazbear location, taking the role of security guard in order to look for William and eventually kill him. He then sets the places on fire one by one. Who knows how Michael keeps getting these jobs, but my man was on a mission to find his father, and you know what? He does. He has a confrontation, but the two of them end up surviving. But then, Henry, Emily, and Michael team up to kill William for good. And then, kind of in like a really good closure moment, the three of them perish together. That was what was supposed to happen, however, um, 
something was amiss because William didn't actually die. It seems like his physical body did. Somehow he's like code, a virus I guess, called Glitch Trap. And now Glitch Trap is brainwashing actual people, is like overriding the code of animatronics left and right. So <laughs> you may be thinking a lot of things, but one of the things that you might be thinking is how do, how does this, how does all of this lore align with the actual games that were released? They jump all over the place in the timeline, but essentially Five Nights at Freddy's, the first one, you play as a security guard named Mike Schmidt. It is rumored that this is an alias for Michael Afton when he was going on the hunt for his father, setting the places on fire on his little arson spree. So in this game, your job is to stay alive while animatronics come and try and kill you. In pretty much all of these early games, you're given instructions by this phone guy and his reasoning for these dangerous animatronics is that he thinks that they think you're a skeleton like an innard of an animatronic so they would try and stuff you in another suit. So you interact with a few characters in this game. Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, Foxy, and Golden Freddy. Golden Freddy is special. He's more of like a ghost entity than an actual animatronic. In this game, you prioritize preserving your battery life and also checking the left and right doors. In FNAF 2, it's pretty similar to the first one. For all the nights except the last one, you play as this guy named Jeremy Fitzgerald. And then on the last night, you play as Fritz Smith. I've seen people say that Fritz Smith is an alias for Michael. And then Jeremy is just some random dude, but unfortunately on his last shift, he was bitten in the head by one of the animatronics. Was that the bite of 87? Yes, it is. In this game, you mainly deal with the toy versions of Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica, Mangle, which is basically if Toy Foxy had a rough night, Balloon Boy, and the Marionette Slash Puppet. This game has the iconic TikTok sound in it. You have to prioritize winding up this music box thing and you can use this Freddy mask to hide because uh, these new animatronics have this facial recognition feature. In FNAF 3, you are playing as Michael who is having a one-on-one -on -one battle with Springtrap, aka William, his father. It was supposed to be the final battle but they ended up both surviving. In FNAF 4, you play as Kid Michael who is being haunted by the thoughts of these animatronics. He's in his bedroom, there's a really big emphasis on listening in this game. Then we have sister location where you're playing as Michael again and are mainly dealing with Baby and Ballora, which William made in the images of Elizabeth and Clara respectively. This is where Michael becomes this whole flesh shell thing and is depicted as a purple man, which is confusing because there is a character that the fandom calls Purple Guy, but Purple Guy refers to William Afton and not Michael, who was also depicted as purple. The pizzeria simulator tells the story of Henry and Michael killing William. They all supposedly perish in a fire. Ironically, this game is the most lighthearted of the bunch. You play a bunch of mini games and customize your own little pizzeria. Then we've got Help Wanted and Dread Bear, both VR related games. And then we have Special Delivery, which is an augmented reality game. But what I've gathered is that they introduce Glitch Trap and a character named Vanessa, who you play as in Help Wanted, I believe. Vanessa eventually gets brainwashed by Glitch Trap to do William's bidding. Then in Security Breach, there is this whole free roam approach where you are navigating through this major pizza plex. In this one, you're mainly battling three animatronics, but you're also fighting Vanessa slash Fanny, who is posing as a security guard, but everyone that I mentioned is infected by Glitch Trap. You're playing in this game as a kid named Gregory. There is speculation that Gregory is a robot, by the way. In this game, Freddy is actually your friend and he's so funny. You as Gregory, obviously you run into inconveniences on your journey and Freddy is always so apologetic each and every time. It's a crappy Mr. Hippo fridge magnet? Lame. I am sorry, Gregory. I am truly sorry. There are new minor characters, but my favorite is this daycare attendant. They sort of have a Jekyll and Hyde thing going on where the sun is nice and the moon is evil. Then in Ruin, which is like in addition to Security Breach, you're playing as this girl named Cassie who is trying to save Gregory after she gets an audio message um, from him saying that he's trapped in the Pizzaplex. But in this version of the game, the Pizzaplex is like deserted and ruined. And then she gets to Gregory, but it turns out it wasn't like Gregory wasn't calling her all along. She was tricked by this robot thing called Mimic. 
And then she falls to her doom in this elevator thing, possibly by Mimic, possibly by Gregory. She might not even be dead. The ending is very ambiguous for this one. Hopefully I didn't get a lot wrong, please tell me about it in the comments. It's definitely a lot to wrap my mind around, so I'm sure if y'all are hearing this for the first time, it'll be a trip as well. So I think on the horizon we've got a help wanted two game that's coming out. And then obviously the movie starring my love, Josh Hutchinson. The main character's name is Mike Schmidt, which one of Michael Afton's aliases. And he seems to have a younger sister named Abby. Who the fuck is Abby? Thank y'all for coming with me on this journey and I will see y'all next time. Bye.